What's up, Dart family? We are back in the Dart language tour in a very special part, uh, probably in my mind, one of the more critical parts of being able to program uh, more than functions or the types um, is classes. Okay, we've been using classes up until this point to demonstrate other features, but now we're really gonna focus on classes themselves. Um, so the people who made Dart and languages before it, they came up with this thing called object orientation. And in my mind, it's, it's just a way for uh, a language to be designed so that humans can reason about their code. There's other um, sort of like constructs like functional programming uh, where that's, that's the idea that everything revolves around in object-oriented programming. Um, object orientation is, is just one sort of aspect that uses classes and, and you know the, the objects themselves that we're, that we're moving around and doing things with. Um, they exist sometimes in a bigger framework that might be like a model view controller or model view view model um, type setup. Um, so object orientation isn't everything, but it is a big piece of it. Um, and again, this is just a way for humans to be able to reason about their code um, and, and create programs. But you could, you could make up any other type of uh, concept and create a programming language around it. Um, and for people to use it and be successful with it, it's important that there's this balance where like humans can reason about uh, the code. Okay, so Dart is object oriented, has classes. This is a, a feature of a lot of programming languages, uh, but it also has mix in based, um, like you can get your functionality from these things that are called mix ins. Uh, so rather than inheriting everything from a parent class, um, we're able to sort of like insert things from the side almost. Okay, that's how that's how you can start to think about it. Um, just looking at the the word class from the English language, uh, the classes in programming aren't like um, a a lesson or a course where you're learning something, and they're a little bit like <clears throat> the caste system or a sort of class hierarchy in society where you have upper class wealthy people, you have middle class working people, and then you have maybe uh, the working poor, uh, people who are quote unquote low class, um, but that's really just in terms of economic, um, I guess, what, what their viability or something. Um, but even that's a bad example to carry over directly to programming because um, unless you have like <laughs> the people at the top paying their fair share of taxes, uh, the poor people aren't really able to take advantage of that by inheriting that that wealth. Um, so it, it's not exactly, maybe in a, a totally egalitarian society, that would be a good analogy, uh, but in reality it's not. So classes <clears throat> really in programming is, I think it comes from the word classification. How should we classify this thing that we are reasoning about? Um, so more than classes in my mind, it's, it's really classifications, um, is how it makes sense to me anyways. Um, just because that, that's the most sort of appropriate way to think about it. Um, another, uh, better word perhaps would be a blueprint. Um, if you're going to create these objects and they have, you know, data or properties and these objects have behavior functions, methods, things they can do in the program. Um, we really need a blueprint on how to construct those and to define their behavior. Okay. So that's just a little bit about the language of what a class is so we can make sense of it. The documentation says every object is an instance of a class. Uh, the object itself is the, the, um, the not not the class itself but the instantiation of the class uh, after it's been constructed 
and all classes except null descend from object. Do I still have, yeah, here we go. This is an example of um, sort of the object hierarchy in Dart where this object here is the one you'll see most often. Uh, it looks like, you know, object with this question mark is like, well, it could be null or it could be a real object. Uh, so object and null themselves are siblings in that sense. Uh, most things, um, I guess all things actually, besides null and, and never, uh, all things descend from object. And here's just two examples. An iterable uh, list inherits from iterable. And these things themselves are classes. So there's a list class, there's an iterable class, there's a, an object class. Um, and, and ultimately these things inherit. I'm not sure about num, double and int, because you can't uh, extend or inherit from these. Or maybe I've just done it wrong, but um, this is this is kind of the, the hierarchy you need to think about in your mind. Okay, so get a good look at that. Okay, mix in based inheritance. So we just saw inheritance with like object, iterable, list. That's regular class inheritance, single class inheritance, not having two parents, just one. Uh, mix in based inheritance means that although every class has exactly one superclass, a class body can be reused in multiple class hierarchies. I'll show you what this means later uh, and kind of put it in more uh, everyday terms. But um, it's, yeah, you'll have to see it in action because this, this kind of confused me when I first read it. A class body can be reused in multiple class hierarchies. Like um, I needed to see it to believe it. Uh, and then finally, extension methods are a way to add functionality to a, functionality to a class without changing the class or creating a subclass. Um, so in, in my mind, this is like, um, it's not a class inheritance, so you haven't defined in your blueprint that uh, you should have a certain property or behavior. Um, you're not injecting uh, into your blueprint or mixing in other components that may be shared between classes. Um, it's really just like a, a one-off fix or a one-off patch uh, to the, the class properties and um, behavior. Okay, so that's kind of the um, just the first paragraph on classes in Dart. And I will show you some examples now. Okay, <clears throat> so we have our entry point into our program, the main function. Before that, um, outside of that, is where we define our classes. And it, it just starts with the class keyword. Okay, so if you're actually in like VS Code or Android Studio, um, what you'll, you'll notice is that like, everything is ultimately imported into our, our main Dart file. Uh, we don't actually define, ever define classes inside of main. At least I, I don't think we do. Somebody please correct me in the comments if, if that's possible, but I've never been able to do that. Okay, so the class definitions or the blueprint. I think it'd be really cool if we could substitute class with the term blueprint. Um, anyways, we use class, it's a keyword. Um, if we have a healthcare system, we might have a patient, okay? Now remember that um, this image, everything descends from objects, so that's what we're going to inherit from. Okay, so there's another keyword called extends. And you see how it turns green and you get the right keyword? Just like that. Okay. And there's our block of code. We can do this if we're gonna start typing something there. Uh, otherwise, let's just leave it like this. Now this is a good start. This is just kind of an empty object. So class patient extends object. We didn't need a semicolon there. Um, in fact, it's unexpected, unexpected text, remove the semicolon, uh, but you do need those cur uh, curly braces. So a class declaration must have a body even if it's empty. Try adding an empty body. So that's what we had there. Okay, um, so what this allows us to do is we can now have a, a variable uh, instantiated, let's call it under uh, lowercase patient, okay? Um, and let's say new patient. All right, so this is all valid code. The only thing that's wrong with this, the only warnings we're getting is that there's an unnecessary new keyword 
I put it in here to show you uh, kind of the older dart, dart style. Um, it still works. It's just you know you don't you don't need to have it there anymore. Um, and then the vat like we're not actually using this. So if we wanted to use it, we could print patient just like that. So we have a valid Dart program. We can have the new keyword there or not. I'll take it out because this is what you're more likely to see in newer code. Okay, and so we printed patient. It is an instance of patient. It's an instance of this class. Okay, this is our little widget that came off our factory line. This is our blueprint. Um, now if I type patient and then a dot, you'll see I get this IntelliSense um, sort of suggested things that I can run. I can get the hash code for it. I can get the runtime type. Um, and all those things we just saw, they came because we extended from object, okay? If we create a patient and extend iterable. Can we not do that? Concrete implementation. All right, there's <laughs> there are more requirements for this. So let's stick to object. So that's where runtime type is defined, okay? Um, right. And if we run it, we'll see that instead of instance of patient, because we're not printing patient itself, we're getting the runtime type. It is a patient, okay? Um, the nice thing about Dart, and other languages have this feature as well, is you kind of get this sort of extends object for free, as they say. So we don't actually have to type it out every time. Just saying class patient, by default, we extend the object. Uh, so if you wanted to extend something else, you know, whatever, you have to define that. Otherwise, you're extending object automatically. Okay, <clears throat> so that is um, the first part to know about uh, classes. Okay, so Dart is an object-oriented language with classes and mix and based inheritance. Um, right, okay. So the next thing, let's say we have a, um, let's say we have like a, a nurse class and notice that we're, we're putting everything in all caps. Um, I don't know if it's a requirement. Yeah, name types using upper camel case. Um, I don't think it's a requirement. Can't be referenced before it's declared. Yeah, what if we just picked a different variable? Hmm, interesting. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of seeing like, can you define a class um, without using upper camel case? Looks like you can, but it's not a best practice, which is why we get that warning. Okay. Um, that's why when I try to use the same variable name as the class, class name, <laughs> uh, it didn't work. Okay. So, right, so we have a, a nurse um, and we can have, let's, let's say like a, um, a doctor, like so. Um, and let's just create a doctor here. Okay. Now, we're not using either of them yet. Um, what I wanna show you is that we can add functionality to this. So what do nurses and doctors do? They provide care. And what we're just gonna do is print uh, providing care. So when we call this, we're providing care, all right? Let's copy that and put it here. All right, so now we can call nurse dot uh, provide care. It's, it's included as, as part of the other stuff, but provide care, we defined in our class. We didn't inherit it from object, okay? So a nurse can do that and, and a doctor can also provide care. All right, now this, this gets repetitive. Um, I mean, we can run it just to see that we're providing care. Um, one thing we can do is, is identify that there is some commonality, a sort of uh, common trait that maybe both of these nurses, like all nurses and all doctors, need to provide care. Uh, so let's create a class called provider. Okay. Um, we could extend object if we wanted to. 
Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to show now that what I want to do is extend provider. And careful with that. Okay. That way I can I can refactor my code, which just means I'm moving it around and making it better. Um, to where just by saying my class extends this other thing, because I have to find this behavior here, they automatically get it. Okay, they can call uh, these functions or methods um, from their parent class. Okay, that's why if I run this now, it'll still work. Okay, even though I don't have any behavior defined in my nurse class, I've inherited it now. So that's that's the act of inheritance. Okay. Right. Okay, so a mixin, um, let's suppose, I'm just gonna put these all on one line so it's easier to read. Let's suppose that we have um, maybe like a surgeon, okay. Um, stay away from that example for now. Uh, what I want to show is that, so a nurse can't write prescriptions. We need a doctor to do that. Um, if we add a method here in provider, well, the nurse would have to either like override that method and then somehow say, I can't do that, right? I should throw an error if a nurse tries to do that. Um, but the other way to do that is with, with what's called a mix-in. Uh, and it's just a fancy, type of class, okay? But I wanna just give a certain type of functionality only to doctors. There's a new keyword, it's called mixin, okay? As I'm typing, it's blue, it turns green. Um, let's call it prescribable. Uh, this word with able, right? Like assignable, prescribable, listenable, things that can do something. Uh, is sometimes how you'll see these mixins named. All right. Um, and what we will do is say there's this mixin called prescribable. Uh, it has this thing called, um, you know, we want anything that is prescribable, we can prescribe medications. Let's just say prescribe meds. Um, and we'll just print for demonstration purposes prescribing meds. <clears throat> right. So how can we give this functionality only to doctors and not to nurses? Remember, we decided not to put it in this provider parent class because we didn't want nurses to have to override it in their, um, in their body there. So what we'll do is we'll say doctor extends provider with prescribable. Okay, uh, now a doctor should be able to say doctor dot prescribe meds. Doctor dot, and look, there's our function. Okay, we gained access to it because we defined a mixin and um, we set up here, right? So this is our entire blueprint. This is our entire class. The name is doctor. It extends provider to get um, this functionality. It gets this little bit of functionality from this mix-in, okay? And it's a way to separate functionality inheritance by mixing it in. And then if we wanted to, we could further define properties and behavior on our doctor class by writing code in the, in the block here. Okay, so that's, um, that's what we've done up until this point. Um, Earlier I mentioned that a class body can be reused in multiple class hierarchies. That's what this is. This mixin is really just a fancy class. Okay? <laughs> you see what I did there? I replaced mixin with class and I, I'm pretty sure a doctor can still prescribe meds just by saying with this class. Um, okay, and it ran. Um, the, the thing about the prescribable, if you like use this old class notation, it works, but if you try to um, make it where like you can instantiate 
prescribable, uh, you get an error. So it says the class prescribable can't be used as a mix-in because it declares a constructor. Um, so maybe some other developer on your team is like, oh, this class doesn't have a constructor. Maybe it's not named uh, prescribable, so it's not as obvious that it's a mix-in type class. And they try to make a constructor there. That can be confusing and waste a lot of time. Uh, so we get this sort of syntactic sugar. We still have the, um, the error message, which is nice. Mixins can't declare constructors. Um, and we're able to get back where we were. Okay, so use the mixin keyword. Um, a lot of older code they haven't updated to this. So if you actually go search on pub.dev for packages uh, that use mixin like this, there's, there's actually not a lot. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, you might run into more of the, the class or abstract class uh, usage. Okay, and I wanted to show you this. This class body can be reused in multiple class hierarchies. So it confused me whenever I was first looking at it. And I asked a question in the Pure Dart channel <clears throat> here. Uh, where I, I quoted the docs and then I said I asked what's another way to say this are the authors just trying to say that a mixin can be used with any class no matter where the class lives on the ancestor chain um, right so we can plop our mixin into multiple classes anywhere in our code um, and got a, a nice answer from Randall Schwartz he said it's just automated cut and paste with sensible conflict rules Automated cut and paste. Um, I really like that definition. <clears throat> because by saying with prescribable, it's just automatic cut and paste. I don't have to do that. But if I already had uh, something here, prescribed meds, and it did something else like printed um, with prescribed meds, Right now we have a conflict. <laughs> I have prescribable, um, and then so I have this functionality, but then I've also defined it here. There's a conflict, and I get a warning: annotate uh, overridden members. Let's see what happens whenever I actually run this. Is it going to print will prescribe meds or prescribing meds? You see, how I, I overwrote it, but I didn't um, add the annotation, which is where you say like that override. Okay, so now the warning goes away. Um, these things on multiple lines, they kind of go hand in hand. Okay, so, but in this case, we actually don't want um, doctor to override it. We want to use the, the mix-in as it is. Okay, so we had um, yeah, we had sort of an automated cut and paste and a sensible conflict rule, which was give us a warning. All right, so that was great. Okay, um, extension methods are a way to add functionality to a class without changing their class or creating a subclass. So to add functionality, we've seen three ways so far, okay? We either inherit from a parent class, we either add a mixin to kind of inherit or inject functionality, and then the other way is to write our own uh, functions, um, you know, treat patient or whatever. Okay, so now our doctor can do three things um, from inheritance, mix in, or directly in its own block of code, its own definition. Uh, another way you can do it is using extension methods. And this is really where if you're, if you're using a package from some other library and you want to uh, change that code a little bit, uh, it allows you to do that. Um, but you can also do it in your own code if you wanted to. And you use this little keyword called extension. Um, so let's call this extension like uh, revoked okay and what we're going to revoke is doctor okay um, bu 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 bum. now I think what we can do maybe is 
see if we can override the treat patient thing. Your license has been revoked. Okay. Um, so now in this case, um, now I, I just have one file here, right? This is one file, maybe it's called main.dart. I've de declared all my classes, my mix and my extension, and then I've just invoked them down here in, in my main function. Um, if I want to treat patient now, because I've extended this original doctor class, okay, and all my definitions were up here, okay, class doctor, it has its own block, extends provider, it gets that functionality. With prescribable, it gets this functionality. Um, but now, separately, maybe in just one part of the code and not in others, it's sort of like a, a one-off um, a la carte uh, application. Uh, I've extended it, uh, and, and in effect, I've overwritten the uh, treat patient. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it says that I'm treating the patient. So <laughs> this is interesting um, and good to notice that it doesn't actually override um, the the thing itself. The method doesn't override an inherited method. Uh, updating this class to match the superclass, removing the override annotation. So I, I still don't think it's going to override it. Okay. But what it allows us to do is to um, have other uh, other ways to define methods on the fly. Um, so now we have this method called revoke license. Your license has been revoked. So somewhere in our code, now we can call doctor dot revoke license. Okay, and now your the doctor's license has been revoked. Um, so in a separate part of our code, we were able to on the fly just like put a little a little feature on there um, that isn't part of the normal definition of doctor. Okay, so this is the um, the introduction to classes. They're op Dart is object oriented. It's just one part of the um, of a Dart program. Typically, like in Flutter, you'll have multiple files and imports and access to bit databases and like API calls, and you'll architect your application with state management uh, in such a way that you have like this big beautiful application. Object orientation is just a way to reason about the code you're using in that architecture um, to declare these little blueprints uh, with properties and functionality um, and then instantiate them along the way, import them and whatnot um, so that you can have a working program. Okay. Um, right, and, and so I've pretty much demonstrated, I think, everything that I wanted to we have our class keyword. Uh, we can be explicit and extend the object or, or not. Uh, we get that for free, as they say, um, or by default. Uh, we can have uh, an intermediate class between object and, and the one we want, where they share functionality. So the nurse and the doctor both an extend provider, uh, so they can both provide care. Uh, our doctor um, needs to be able to prescribe medication. So instead of inheriting it from provider, we um, use with keyword and we mix in that functionality into our class. Uh, and then finally, maybe somewhere off in the program, it's a one-off case, we need to revoke a doctor's license. It shouldn't happen very often, right? Um, but we're able to define this extension method revoked on doctor uh, and say, hey, uh, now, now you should be able to do this. Okay, great. That is a good first overview. Any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer. Um, and we've got a long ways to go through these and I'm looking forward to it. Catch you next time.